With synthetic biology being a relatively nascent field, new and exciting technologies are being developed on a regular basis. One of these technologies is the recently developed spike tag spike catcher system. In short, this is a tagging system which forms an extremely strong bond between peptides without the need of help from external elements. The spike tag spike catcher system was first developed by Bijan Zakiri and Mark Howarth in 2010. It is a method developed that allows for the formation of really strong isopeptide bonds between two desired molecules. The concept behind this system was inspired by an observation made from the organism Streptococcus pyogenes, which possesses a protein known as the fibronectin binding protein, or FBAB for short. Within this protein is an immunoglobulin-like collagen adhesion domain known as CNAB2 where a single isopeptide bond is present and provides incredible stability to the overall protein. The research team had thought that this trait could be very useful in developing a new kind of peptide tag. So they identified where this peptide bond formed in the CNAB2 domain and split it into a peptide tag containing 13 amino acid residues named the SPI tag and a second 138 amino acid protein named the SPI catcher. The tags could spontaneously form the isopeptide bond, however, over the course of a few hours in its current state. So the research team had tinkered with and optimized the two parts and managed to achieve isopeptide bond formation over the course of a few minutes, making it much more useful and practical. The covalent intermolecular isopeptide bond forms simply through the nucleophilic attack by a lysine residue on a spy catcher part to the carbonyl group of an aspartic acid residue on the spy tag. This releases a water molecule in the process. The strength of this bond was tested against a number of conditions to see just how strong and resilient it actually is. The formation of this bond was tested through a large range of reaction temperatures and it was found that the reaction could occur between 4 degrees Celsius all the way up to 37 degrees Celsius. Since this reaction is stable in these heat conditions, it can be used in live cell imaging amongst many other different experiments. The formation of this isopeptide bond is also possible using a large range of pH values. It's been shown that this bond can form in pH values between 5 and 8, making it suitable for an array of experiments. The buffer used in the reaction also barely affects the reaction rate of bond formation. This process can be used in a range of buffers, including PBS, phosphate citrate, HEPES, and truce without any issue. Since there are no cysteine residues in the tag, the use of detergents or reducing agents doesn't really affect the reaction either. This useful technique can be incorporated into recombinant technology to create fusion proteins that can be used in two different ways. The first of these ways is the development of a fusion protein that is encoded to contain a standard signal peptide, a spy tag, the protein of interest and a spy catcher. The spy tag then creates an isopeptide bond with the spy catcher of the same protein forming a protein cyclization. This protein cyclization makes it an extremely thermal stable molecule. In the case of a normal protein, when heat is applied, the protein unfolds and forms an irreversible denatured aggregate. However, in the case of the spy tag, spy catcher recombinant protein that has formed an isopeptide bond, the protein is unfolded, but the isopeptide bond remains intact, preventing the formation of these irreversible denatured aggregates. So once the heat source is removed and the system cools, the spy tag spy catcher protein can then refold into its original conformation. This kind of thermostability in a protein is extremely desired in the industrial use of enzymes. Another way in which this technology has been used has been in conjugating different protein building blocks. Two fusion proteins are needed. One with a signal peptide, spy tag, a protein of interest, and another spy tag and a second fusion protein produced, which contains quite the opposite, with a signal peptide, spike catcher, protein of interest, and another spike catcher. The spy tags of protein 1 can then interact with the spike catchers of protein 2 in one of two ways. The first way being where both spike tags of protein 1 interact with both the spike catcher parts of protein 2, creating a stable structure of the two proteins. The second way in which these proteins can interact with one another is where one tag interacts with one catcher, leaving a spy part available for bonding with other proteins in the same manner, in turn forming a chain-like structure of proteins. 
you can kind of think of this system as providing a glue for forming protein conjugates. With the development of this new system, there are countless new possibilities that can be explored, such as the production of extremely heat-stable proteins that can be used in industry, or provide the ability of conjugating protein building blocks to create new protein architectures by synthetic biologists. One can only begin to imagine what kind of developments may come from synthetic biology using these kinds of technological advances.